photos and videos boring? Do they lack that artsy style? Well, using Creative Prism filters can be an excellent option. The only problem is, is that they're not exactly cheap, unless you know where to look for them. I ran into this problem where I honestly couldn't justify spending $60 on a creative filter. So I hopped onto AliExpress and, to my surprise, found lots of cheap filters. But there must be a catch to this, right? I thought I wanted to make a video today talking about my experience using them and if there's any legitimate downsides to using these cheaper alternatives. Let's start with the first filter, the Starburst filter. I found this filter for the high price of $1.82. Keep in mind that I bought all these filters in the highest filter option so they have maximum flexibility when using them on lenses. I just used some step up rings to adapt them to my lenses. This filter is definitely one that you can only use in very niche circumstances because it has a very powerful effect, but it can look incredible when used. If you look closely, there's an array of little strings embedded into the glass, which then can cause your images to flare up when something bright is shone into them. I found that it needs to be a very bright light source that shines directly into the lens for the stars to appear. So anything that's sparkly or things like exposed bulbs or reflections will work. For less than $2, this is an absolute steal. While probably not being your most used filter, it's probably worth picking it up as just in case that a scenario pops up where you can use something like that. As for its quality, it feels like any other standard polarizing filter, so I think it's a great buy. The prism is an excellent filter and also not exactly a filter, as it's just a piece of glass, which technically also makes it a filter, as filters are just pieces of glass. So is a prism a filter? If you're looking for something a bit more reflection-y and want more control over the image, the prism is the one for you. Realistically, there's no difference between this $10 prism and this $60 one. They're both made of glass, and as they're going to be blurred out anyways, there's really no difference. This filter also has a quarter inch thread on the bottom of it, so if you'd like to mount to your camera with the use of a magic arm, you can do that really easily. If you want to go handheld with this, you can either use a handle or you can use an old tripod like the one I had for my GoPro and just screw it in there and it works fine. When used in the right conditions, this filter slash prism gives off a beautiful blurry chromatic quality. The prism definitely looks better in bright conditions where lots of light is there to reflect off it. Once again, I can't really spot a way how a more expensive prism could be any better than this one, as it already fills its purpose beautifully. I also decided to throw on these diopter filters here. While not being a prism or creative filter, they're really great for making creative shots work. Basically, what a diopter lets you do is reduce the minimum focus distance of your lens. It's basically just a macro filter for your camera. I honestly didn't have any high expectations for these filters as they were only $20. Unfortunately, I don't really have a good source of comparison to these filters as I don't have any other more expensive diopters but here's what I observed from using these ones. So there's quite a bit of chromatic aberration and barrel distortion in the corners of the frame, but if you're going for that creative look, I'd say just embrace it. I was pretty happy to find that using an oversized filter on the lens actually had no visible downside to it. I also think that having five of these filters is a bit overkill. While I think it's good to have more options, I didn't really find myself using like the plus two or the plus three filters. I just found myself using the plus 10, the most extreme one all the time. So that's just that, I guess. All in all, this filter really opens up a ton of possibilities for shots that you wouldn't be able to normally get. So I think I can quite confidently recommend picking up a set of these filters, as they're actually quite helpful for capturing small details of objects, like in this video for example. And it's definitely a lot cheaper than buying a whole dedicated macro lens. And this filter brings us quite nicely to the next filter, which is the split diopter. Which, you know, surprisingly is just a diopter, but split in half. This was the most expensive out of the four here, probably due to a more complicated manufacturing process. I must say though, it really was worth the money. The images which you can get out of this filter look incredible. It looks kind of like the prism filter, but without the chromatic effects. It's super handy that it's mounted straight to the filter thread as opposed to the prism. I also love that you can actually rotate the diopter inside the filter so you can always change which side of the image is blurred out. It's probably relatively easy to overuse this effect as it's quite stunning and you just want to use it all the time. But it's quite pronounced, and that being said, I think you should probably refrain from using it all the time. But like with the star filter, it looks incredible when used in the right circumstance. So while being a fair bit more expensive than the other filters on this list, it undercuts the price from more official stores. <laughs> so what do we learn here today? With a bit of research, you can honestly find almost the same products on websites like AliExpress, DHgate, Wish, all those kind of sites. So don't always fall for the marketing BS and always do your research 
before buying any sort of product, especially something like this, which can probably pretty easily be created for quite a cheap price. Of course, there may be some quality differences in the long term that could shorten these products' lifespan, but I don't think this is really that important because filters by nature are pretty fragile things. If you want to go even cheaper, then you can always go along the DIY route. There are some great videos that I'll link in the description where you can actually transform an old UV or just an old filter that you've got lying around into a prism and create a filter by just adding some old bits of glass on top of it, which is really, really awesome. I'm really impressed by the overall quality of these filters, considering that they only cost a fraction of the price from more reputable brands. As for actually using creative filters in your work, they can definitely make a great addition to an image. But like with everything, make sure not to overuse them and only use them when it actually makes sense. Thank you for watching this video and getting to this point. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome weekly filmmaking content. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.